All right, everybody, this is Ross. What you guys are looking at here are my blueberry bushes. And I have literally thousands of blueberries here on these plants that have dried up on the bush because we've been having a drought. And these drought-like conditions have certainly also kind of damaged the plants. But in order to protect the plant itself, instead of ripening all these blueberries, the blueberry plants just say, well, you know, instead, I think I'm just gonna reject and drop all of my blueberries just so that I can protect my leaves, my branches, so the remaining water that I have can be dedicated towards keeping the plant alive. And that's kind of what I want to talk to you guys about today in this video is two plants in particular here that I've growing, I'm growing in the Philadelphia area that really are suffering with this drought. And there's really only two species actually. And these are two that I know some of you guys in the past have asked me about and have wondered if you could grow them in desert-like conditions or in really warm conditions. And here I am just finally coming to the conclusion, the answer is no. Uh, maybe of course, if you had irrigation, like I don't have any irrigation to these beds, uh, it would be possible, but certainly a lot more difficult and I think a little bit foolish. But if there's a will, there's a way. You guys really want to try honeyberries as an example or blueberries in a drier location, be my guest. But typically these plants, I think they really need high organic material in the soil. Um, at least they prefer that. They also really like soil moisture, right? Being plants that kind of came up in the understory and evolved in the understory, they like cooler and more wet conditions. So when I have a drought here in the Philadelphia area, even these relatively established blueberries and honeyberries, they have struggled significantly with this drought. And uh, these are really the only two species that I've noted here on the property that have just been demolished. Um, I hope, and I'm sure that these plants, the branches themselves are okay, but the leaves certainly have all crisped up. Some of these branches are probably dead. Yeah, uh, without a doubt. Um, and this is gonna affect my crop in future years. And it kind of makes me start to think a little bit because, you know, this was not expected. This is not a thing that really in the Philadelphia area or in the Northeast really happens all that much. I, I typically live in a pretty stable climate. Um, you could see, look how green this chay tree is, you know, or even these persimmons, which are, these persimmons definitely are one of the better trees for drought-like conditions, or even the mulberry, let's say. But, you know, it just goes to show you that we have to prepare for certain things like this. And, you know, that is also, you know, talking about things like adding mulch to the soil, um, irrigating if needed, um, also maybe planting these things in a way that allows us to have better moisture. So maybe using things like food forests, swales, approaching this in a slightly different way so that in the future we do have something like this, we don't have a problem. Now, I will say right over here are some blueberry plants that I have. They're younger, they're smaller. They ripened their fruit before it got really hot and really dry. So maybe that was a part of it, but also these two are planted directly in our native clay. They're in 100% clay, whereas this bed over here is very dry peat moss where these blueberries are planted. So uh, I wanted to amend the soil, make sure we had enough of a low pH, and they've certainly regretted it. Now these honeyberries are in clay. So, you know, I can't blame the peat moss entirely, but certainly I think it's a contributing factor. Um, but regardless, I think that's really the point I wanted to make with you guys in this video is that I don't think these species really are meant for some of you guys out there. I know there are low chill varieties of blueberries. There are the Southern low bush varieties and they're breeding them and they're coming out with certainly more varieties that are um, tolerant to lower chill environments. But again, they're just not, really these plants are not meant for that. In terms of the honeyberry, 
I have also seen this, and I know a lot of you guys can probably attest that, especially the younger honeyberries, they struggle with these really hot and dry conditions like that. So really mulch them well to get them established. Here's one in our food forest system that we have, and even this one's struggling. Uh, I do have one over here that is the oldest, most established on the property, and this one's doing just fine, but again, not great. So again, you still see that browning here on the leaves and some of the branches are maybe even taking some damage. Um, but that's this little video here, guys. I wanted to educate you a little bit on this because uh, you know not everything's perfect in Perfectville. So you gotta either approach this in a different way. Um, you have to either, like I said, do some kind of food forest have a lot of mulch, biomass available to you, uh, swales, or you know, plant the right species to be a bit more resilient. Now, of course, everything's gonna work out here, but um, maybe not where you guys are. So that's my little piece of advice. I thank you guys for watching this one. We'll see you for the next one, all right? Take care, hit that subscribe button.